It was here Friday night and we had we had all night prayer. I was concerned about that person getting out of that casket and trying to do trying to do anything. That person was dead to, to steal. They were dead to cussing. They were dead to lying. They were going to tell another lie. They were going to tell a lie and they were going to steal anything because they were dead to it. The Bible says in Romans 6 that you are dead. It says, consider yourself or count yourself dead unto sin. I mean, let me tell you something. I'm going to show it to you because you you got. There's no way you can ever overcome temptation while you think you have to overcome temptation. The only time you can overcome temptation is when you understand that you're, you're dead to it and, and dead people can't sin. You are dead to sin. Now you've got to take that by faith and speak that over yourself. I've got to overcome temptation. The Bible says you overcome by the blood of the Lamb. When you're born again, are you washing the blood of the Lamb? And the word of your testimony. This is what the New Testament church has to realize. You can't overcome sin by trying to overcome sin. You gotta understand you've already overcome it, and you've got to be able to proclaim it. You overcome it by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. What's the word of your testimony? What God said about you? What did God say about you? He said you, you're dead to sin, so you can't sin anymore because you're dead to it. And when you believe that and say that, you begin to do that, you begin to achieve that. Oh, you gotta get this. Oh, if we don't go farther than that. We don't go any farther than this verse tonight. I'm gonna preach this. You gotta get this. Look, look at Romans six. Let's just jump over Romans six. Let me show you. You are dead, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. I'm telling you, when you begin to confess this, sin will not have a place in your life because you you won't even be tempted by it because because you're dead to it. Dead people are not tempted. Hallelujah. You go to a you go to a, 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 a funeral home. To a dead person and, 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 and show show them you know some cheesecake and say you know you want you know you want to buy this cheesecake. They ain't not gonna move. The Bible says be immovable, unshakable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. See, see, when you when you confess that you're dead to sin, now all of a sudden you're un, un, unmovable. Now that now carnality can't pull you, temptation can't move you. Hallelujah. It can't move you. Lord in Jesus, he can't move you out because you're dead to that. God would do a transaction, a spiritual transaction, where he has transformed your mind. The Bible says be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the new man, which is created to be like God in righteousness and holiness. Listen, listen, when you get born again, then once you get born again, now you, you have access to the promises of God. But the scripture says put on the new man. Well, I thought I was born again. Why don't you put on the new man? You are born again, but every day you need to be a, a growing in, in, in the, the newness of Christ. Learning how to think right, how to act right, how to talk right. And that spirit will come on you. The spirit of the new man will come on you to a greater and greater measure so that you begin to walk freer and freer in victory, freer and freer in the Holy Ghost, free and freer over temptation and, and problems. You begin to change situation. It's just a situation changing you. You begin to bring victory out of defeat. Instead of <clears throat> taking what life gives you, you will change what life gives you by speaking the Word of God because the Word of God is a change agent. Oh, hallelujah. I preached myself happier than it was. The Word of God is a change agent. It will change what you get in life, your circumstances, what you see, it will change uh, 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 what comes your way, and only good things will begin to come your way. Because the Bible says that 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 the, the man in Psalm 112 it says that he does not receive an evil report, but he will see his desire for his enemies. What are his enemies? Those things that are trying to tear him down and destroy him: uh, sin, carnality, poverty, fear, lack, uh, sickness. This is those are your enemies, and in the name of Jesus Christ, they are vanquished by the good report you speak out of your mouth. By faith, you speak the good report, and the good report you speak will swallow up the bad report. Do you believe that tonight? Yes. Now, you are dead to the sin that's trying to tempt you, and so it can't tempt you. But, Pastor, it is tempting me. That's because you need to believe you're dead to it, say you're dead to it, until you start feeling dead to it. The key to the Bible, uh, the key to having the, the Word of God to be appropriated in your life is to keep saying what God said about you until it happens in your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The key is to keep saying what God said about you. Did God say you're more than a conqueror? Yes. 
Now, there's been times you don't feel like you're a conqueror. Oh, listen, he said you're more than a conqueror. You need to, begin, you need to say that until that happens in your life. Amen. Until you're conquering over everything. Yes. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. You know, I was telling Sister Ruby, you know, uh, she gave a testimony about how instead of her owing a bill to the doctor, the doctor owed her money. And we begin to, we had her pray, and Sister Rachel pray, the same thing happened to Sister Rachel. And we begin to confess, but instead of us owing money, you know, people owe us money. And uh, uh, like I had shared uh, recently, uh, this past week, I got, you know, I talked to our insurance, our insurance company, and uh, they found out that uh, we've been paying too much premium for about a year and a half. Uh, uh, and uh, so they, so they owe us money. Amen. They owe us over $500. Hallelujah. 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 Well, somebody said, well, you know, what would happen anyway? I don't believe what happened anyway. I believe we confessed our way to $500. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. You can have what you say. Me and, uh, me and Pastor Beanies, we believe in God for a child. We had not done anything not to have a child. And we, and we confess the word of God on a daily basis that we're not better than we have a child. And 17 years, God gave us a child. Somebody might say, well, that would happen anyway. No, it wouldn't. Our child is walking around here because of faith in the word of God. Every time I see her, I understand that faith works. And I want you to know, we're going to keep confessing the word. And you're going to see great, great things happen because God watches over his word to perform it. Amen. Now, as long as you're trying not to sin, you're going to sin. You got to believe you're dead to sin. If you go to a dead person and say, you have the nerve to wear that to the funeral. That doesn't even look good on you. And look at your hair. Your vines are warped. You know what? I never liked you while you were living, and I like you even less now that you're dead. Do you know that person that's going to change their expression? It's going to be there. Don't you hear me? You nasty, trifling, ugly thing. Don't you understand that you are the most pitiful excuse for a person there ever was? I had my eye on your spouse while you were living. Now that you're dead, I'm snatching them. Now listen, the Bible says you're dead to sin. Look what it says. Oh, this is good, good, good. Yeah. Romans 6, uh, verse uh, uh, 6. Knowing this, you see, faith is what you know. Amen. Knowing this, Romans 6, 6, that our old man is crucified with him. Now I'm going to share something, uh, I'm going to tell you share with me if you, if you let me, uh, uh, about how you saw something in the street, you were driving your car, you saw it, and it was a temptation, but you, but you let it go, okay? Elder Tim was a big drug dealer, okay? He was a thief, he was still in drugs, you know? He told me he would find out when somebody wasn't going home, going to a funeral or something. They, one time they went, you stole all kinds of stuff out of their house, okay? Was it because they went to the funeral? Okay. He, he looked at the paper, found out when, 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 who died, where the funeral was going to be, went to the family's house and stole that stuff to get drugs. He don't mind me telling you because he's a new creature. That's right. How do you got him? Plus, you can't have another jeopardy once you've been committed to get a picture again. You say, praise God. <laughs> been to jail, uh, sold drugs, did drugs. Okay. Now, he said, Pastor, got born again. He said, now, this, this is some years after this guy. He said, he was born again. He said, Pastor, I was driving down the street a couple years ago, I guess, and saw something laying in the street. Was it, was it drugs or something? Some drugs. And he said, a feeling came over him. Was it to sell it or to use it? Use it. A feeling came over him to use those drugs. Okay. But see, they, but he recognized, hey, I'm dead to that. Now, if he, had, if he had known the word that he's dead to that, he could have entertained that thought. What I'm saying is this, when you, when you understand you're dead to it, then you begin to say, hey, I'm dead to that. I don't receive that. I don't accept that. That's not me. But if you don't know that, then you can begin to try to entertain that thought and think about it. And then you can begin to say, no, I'm not going to do it. 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 And
and you're looking at your strength and your power, but listen, dead people are not trying not to sin, they can't sin. You got to approach temptation from a, from a position of strength. I can't do what the devil's trying to get me to do because I'm dead to that, and dead men can't do what he wants, to, what he wants me to do. Amen. Hallelujah! And when you begin to say that about yourself, now all of a sudden, God changes your DNA. He changes the chemistry of your body, and now your body is repulsed by the thing that used to turn it on. Hallelujah to God. You wouldn't want to tell God for anything in the world. It would just repulse you. Just repulse you. Wow. And you used to lie on top of a lie. You should believe your lies. You told so long, you thought it was the truth. And now you don't want to lie. It would repulse you. Why? Because you're a new creature. Hallelujah to God. But you can be tempted to lie, and then you can say, hey, I'm dead to that. I don't do that kind of thing. Glory to Jesus. Now, now look what it says. It says, verse uh, 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. The only way the, 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 the uh, drive to sin, the body of sin can be destroyed, is, is if you believe you're dead to that. Otherwise, you're going to still have those passions, those pulls. It's a terrible thing to, to, to know God and keep me getting pulled by stuff. You need to believe you're dead to it. 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 Don't let things hurt your feelings. Dead people don't get hurt feelings. What you look like getting your feelings hurt? Well, they didn't say thank you. So what? There's years you didn't say tell them to thank you. You didn't know he was doing it. <coughs> well, well, nobody appreciates me. Well, now you not only listen. Does God appreciate you? Well, you just called God nobody. We have got to begin to think like God thinks. Say what God says about ourselves. We mean nobody appreciates you. God appreciates you. The Bible says that when a man's ways please the Lord. I mean, let's really get down to it. The real issue is if you're pleasing God or you're not. If you're pleasing God, stop worrying what other people think about you and if they're not treating you right, if they're mistreating you. Who cares how they treat you? If God's treating you right, he's going to make everybody else do with you on the right basis. Because the Bible says when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes him in his enemies live in peace with him. I've been in this thing too long to believe that mess. I, I, I don't, don't want to hear that noise. Talk about, well, people don't appreciate me. I've been hurt in the church. First of all, it's better to be hurt in the church be hurt than to be hurt in the world, because at least if you're in the church, you hear the word. Second of all, why wouldn't you be hurt in the church? The, hurt, the church is full of people, and people can hurt each other. Third of all, if you allow yourself to be hurt and, and be bruised and just it's all emotional, that means you're not thinking about what your true uh, significance is. Because the Bible says that God puts up one and puts down another. You don't have to worry about somebody messing over you, somebody keeping you from your blessing. Because when God says yes, nobody can say no. And when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies live in peace with him. Well, you got to watch your back. You ain't got to watch your back. Watch the word, and the word will watch your back. Because the Bible says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. You got to talk to me up here and here all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy got my back. Hallelujah to God. We, we need to act like we know something. Now, the Bible says, account or credit or consider or believe that you're dead to sin. It says, in. Um, Verse uh, 11. Verse 11. Before we read verse 11, look at verse 7. It's all good. Let's just start at Genesis 1 1. <laughs> look at Romans 7 7. For he that is dead is free from sin. That word free uh, in the Greek is righteous from sin. If you're dead, you're not going to sin. Hmm? Is that true? If you're dead, you're not going to sin. Huh? Hallelujah. If you're dead, you're not going to sin. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Likewise, reckon he also. Who's he talking to? Amen. Are you a saint? Is he talking to you? Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. How much plainer can the man make it? It says, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves. Ye also yourselves. That means you too. Huh? You too, huh? 
Dead in deeds. That means dead in deed. What's a deed? Something you do. Is a deed something you do? It says believe that you are dead to doing wrong deeds. Is, I don't know. Do y'all see this thing? Believe you are dead to doing wrong things. I mean, that's that be free. Hallelujah. Believe, record yourself to be, what's record mean? That's like in the cowboy movies when they, they say, well, Miss, Miss Pearl, I reckon I'll go sit down and have a cup of coffee. I reckon. How you doing? Well, I reckon I'm doing fine, Miss Pearl. I'm going to have a cup of java right now. I reckon. It means, I, you know, I believe, I, I count, I consider, I trust. Reckon ye yourselves also dead to sin and alive to God. Through Jesus Christ, your Lord. Look what it says. Hallelujah to God. I'm preaching better than I'll shout. Look what it says. Verse uh, 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead and deep to sin, but alive unto God. Through Jesus Christ, your Lord. Are you in Jesus Christ? Yes. Have you been born again? Yes. The Bible says, believe that you are dead to sin yes. and alive to God. That means that you're quickened and alive to God. He knows your name. You're, 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 you're not messing up, but you're, you're doing the right thing. You're walking in righteous holiness, and you're dead to sin. He says, believe that, reckon that. Carmichael. 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 Carmichael! Carmichael! I'm talking to you, Carmichael! Why don't you answer me? That's good for us. They get drunk. <laughs> Fatima? Did you laugh at Fatima? Fatima! Fatima! Fatima in the morning, Fatima in the evening, Fatima when the sun goes down. Fatima! Why don't you answer me? It's not my name, my name is Beverly. <laughs> so when sin calls you, and, 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 and says, and you're, you're, you, go, you go to work, and your secretary understands you, and always has conversation for you, not always sympathetic towards you, but your wife is nagging you at home and smelling like liniment and wearing a rag on her head, and that boy says that that should be your wife, and she shouldn't be your wife. You gotta say, I'm dead to that. That's not who I am. I love my wife, Ray. Because I'm a new creature in Christ. Yeah. Huh? You got to say it out of love. At some point through the day, uh, uh, you know, you were, when you meet people, you, you tell them your name is Blue Trucks, right? I mean, I go to, I go to, go to the bank tomorrow and, and do a transaction where they're changing the rate on a mortgage uh, from like 10% to 5%. Can I get a hallelujah? They're changing our mortgage payment from about five thousand dollars to twenty eight hundred dollars a month. Come on, shout for me! Now, now, when I go there, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna go to, to, to the to the front desk. I'm gonna say, I'm here to see uh, to the Shawnee. Would you tell them that Pastor Blonde is here? I'm gonna give them my name. Huh? How do you go? Okay. So, 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 when, when you are tempted, okay, what matters is not what the temptation is saying about you, what matters is what you're saying about you. Hallelujah, God. When the voice is coming to tell you you're a loser, you're not going to make it, things aren't going to work out, okay, listen, what matters is not what that's saying, what matters is what you're saying. Come on, shout somebody. Uh, uh, three years ago, uh, uh, Stockyard's wife was, excuse me, two years ago, Stockyard's wife, uh, no, one year and six months ago, one year and five months ago, Dennis Shaughnessy wrote me a letter telling me that they're going to litigate against us, you know, if, if we don't pay them over $500,000 some thousand dollars immediately because we've been so behind on payments, they said, we're going to take you to court, we're going to litigate this thing, I'm going to hand this thing over to the attorneys. When I got that letter in my hand, I began to say, Lord, I thank you that the, the, book, the book just paid off. I thank you that they don't take us to court. I thank you that they don't litigate. I thank you that they don't, they don't uh, 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 try to take our property. I thank you that we own 110 100 with Solis Avenue. And, 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 and I laid those letters before the Lord. And then uh, we went, uh, 
I got an attorney to represent the church, and we went to meet with him. And the first thing he said, you know, uh, you know, he, he sat down, he met with us, okay? And the reason why we had to send him a payment, okay, we had to send him a payment, we sent him like two or three payments in like a, a 10 month period. But the reason why is because we had a millionaire who was trying to work with us to buy our property for us, and it didn't work out. And so we were, we didn't send him any money because we had a millionaire trying to work with us to buy this property to give it to us. But, but stockyards wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't, wouldn't sell it, okay, it didn't work out. This is proud real estate right here. This is proud real estate. And, and so it didn't work out. And so when it didn't work out, okay, then instead of saying, okay, well, we know you weren't paying because, because you're waiting to see if this deal went through, they knew we were waiting on the deal. That's why they didn't ask for the money. But 10 months, they didn't ask for the money. You don't, you don't not pay your mortgage for 10 months, they don't say nothing to you. The reason why they didn't say nothing to us is because they knew we were working on the deal. They were the they were negotiating. But then, all of a sudden, when it falls through, they want to jump back and act like we paid. Now, we had to pay. We had to pay because you would negotiate and then negotiate here, okay? We were paying off other things with money to position ourselves, okay, in case it just didn't work out. So things didn't work out. So then they sent us letters saying, you know, we're going to take you to court. We're going to give it to the attorneys. I went there, and when we sat down, one of the first things he said was, I mean, it's like, it's like something came on him, and he started, you know, kind of like, you know, like, 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 like the Spirit of God came on him. He said, oh, we don't want to take your property. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I said, Amen. Amen. I said, we want to pay. You know, we worked out a payment plan. You know, and then we exceeded the payment plan. We did more than, than the payment plan required. And then they rewarded us by lowering our interest rate. And then they rewarded us, you know, by changing, you know, changing things. And instead of, they, they said, we, we, we had to go on a 15-year note. And I said, you know, put us, can you put us on a 25-year or 30-year note? They said, no, 15-year note. Well, guess what? They changed their mind. How many know God will change somebody's mind? Yeah. It's what you say about it. Yeah. They changed their mind and they said, okay, we put you on 30 year note. Hallelujah. Yeah. What they don't know is that we're going to pay it off early. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Love son. Love son. Yeah. I'm saying it out of my mouth. I can have what I'm saying and I'm saying it out of my mouth. We pay the whole thing off early. Yeah. Now, you got to be that way yeah. regarding sin. You are dead to sin. Sister Sherry, there's no way you can get angry with anybody and hold a grudge and cuss somebody out and huff and, and roll your eyes and, and, and breathe hard. You can't do that because you're dead to that. I do. Lord Jesus. There's no way I can get aggravated with my wife and my daughter and be short with them and frustrated with them and, and curve and talk nasty to them and, and mean to them. Because uh, when I'm home, nobody sees me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pastors and hide and not just talk mean to my family. I don't do that kind of thing. I talk lovingly to my family. I make it my first ministry and I talk lovingly, lovingly and minister to my family. Amen? Because I'm saying it with my mouth. Amen? Yes, Hallelujah to God. I want you to know that you're dead to sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ, your Lord. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah to God. That's victory tonight. That's victory tonight. I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to sin. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. If you're dead to sin, you just lay there. Somebody says, I can't. I'm never going to stand here. It don't matter to me. I'm God. I'll tell you what. I'm so glad he's gone. Good British. To, uh, just, 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 I'm glad. Don't bother me at all. Wow, I'm dead to that. So it's on the line, and somebody says, you know, that Jack Led preacher of uh, Cecil Blind, he couldn't make it in the practice of law, so he went to, to hustle in the ministry. I'm dead to that. I don't care what they say about me, praise God. You know, somebody says, well, I'm, you know, I don't like you. You know, I never liked you. Don't matter to me, praise God. Well, you know, I, I you know, you think you're George Benson trying to sing? You can't sing. It don't matter to me, praise God. I'm going to make a joyful noise.
Didn't God say, reckon yourself dead to sin? Did we just read it? You need to say every day, I am dead to carnality. I am dead to sin. I am dead to fear. I am dead to unbelief. I am dead to anger. I am dead to strife. I am dead to jealousy. I am dead to vengeance. I am dead to trying to manipulate and get my way. I am dead to be an out of the spirit. And I am alive unto God. Do you understand when God says that you are alive to him? He's making you a promise you can stand on. You got a right to stand up and say, I am in the spirit every day. Because my father told me I am alive to him. You can't be alive to God without being in the spirit. That I confess to myself, I am in the spirit every day. I know the Lord God. I keep the Lord of God. I walk in the order steps of God. Because my God told me in Romans chapter 6 that I am alive. Him. That means he can't uh, forget about me, he can't ignore me, and he can't punish me because I am alive under him. And that means that he's got to bless me. And I'm walking the blessing of Abraham, and everything I do is blessed, and everything I touch prospers. Oh, what a great salvation! What a great salvation! What a great salvation! You are dead unto doing wrong and alive unto doing right. Do you know that's what the scripture means? He says, reckon yourselves. Who's talking to you? God is. Reckon yourselves dead in the sin and alive in the God through Jesus Christ your Lord. That means you have the right to stand up and say, I am dead to do it wrong. And I'm alive to do it right. Which means I never do wrong, but I always do it right. And when I say that, somebody like Chris say, oh, wait a minute, I know I, I, I've been doing wrong. There you go. There you go in your own mind. I've been doing wrong. No, take what God says, use it as a sword, and destroy the wrong you've been doing. I say what God says about you, I am dead to do it wrong, and I am alive to do the right thing. Therefore, I don't do wrong, and I always do right. Am I right in the word of truth? Is it what it says? Believe it, receive it, you're walking it stronger and stronger and stronger every day. And the things you've been struggling to defeat, you want to find out you're already defeated. You just need to talk the victory so the victory manifests in your life. Isn't that good? Stand to your feet. Praise God. Praise God. I couldn't get any further than one verse. Because I have to preach that thing. Because you are dead to the thing you're struggling against. Glory to Jesus. Babysitting when I was about five years old, and I smelled some flesh burning. And looked over, and there was a, a girl, the daughter of my babysitter, was in a wheelchair. She had no feeling in her legs, she was paralyzed with legs. She was sitting there, and the radio, her leg was on the radiator, and her flesh was burning. She had no nerves in her leg that, 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 that could feel anything. And she, she was paralyzed. She had no nerve uh, uh, endings. Well, she, her nerves couldn't feel anything. She was literally burning the smell of flesh, and she didn't feel that. When you are dead to sin, the devil can come up with the biggest concoction to lure you and pull you in the juiciest piece of information about somebody where you can tell it and you can, you, you can embarrass them in front of a thousand people and you won't even touch them because you're dead to gossip. You have the power to pay somebody back for what they did to you, where God raised you up, and now you're in a position where you're over them. Like Joseph. Joseph said, I'm dead to revenge. You live for evil, but God used something good. I'm not going to try to pay you back. And you say, No, I'm dead to that. I'll tell you right now, straight up to your face. If you try to achieve it, you're going to fail. If you try to live it, in your own strength, you'll fall flat on your face. But if you will confess, I am dead to sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ, my Lord, you're going to find out that you're dead to the bad stuff. Not, not even tempted. Not even. Dead people can't get tempted. I'm not talking about having to struggle not to do it. I'm talking about you don't want to do it. It's not even a temptation. The Bible says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God wants you struggling against temptation. He wants not to be. He wants a temptation, 
not to be a temptation. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted like this. We are here without sin. He was tempted like you, but he didn't feel it like you because the temptation that came against him was not a temptation for him because he was not alive to that because his very flesh was the Word of God. Dead of the sin. Dead to the bad stuff. Alive to the God. Alive to the good stuff. What's that mean? That means you want to pray and you don't want to alive. You want to be in the Word and you don't want to steal. You want to pray the Holy Ghost and get high in the Holy Ghost and you don't want to get high on drugs. You want to uh, uh, drink the new wine and you don't want to go 45 and Johnny Walker Red and Hennessy and stuff like that. New preacher of Christ. But you will even think that you're not even saved. You will think that you're worth nothing. You think you'll be some trash. If you try to live with God, then you fail. You live and you fail. And you live and you fail. Finally, you say, Lord, I keep failing. That's because you're not coming at a position of promise. You, you need to understand how tough you are. You are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What's that mean? You are on a throne. What's that mean? You reign in a rule. What's that mean? You are in charge. God knows not all things on your feet. It says in Ephesians chapter 1 that Christ is the head and we are the body. And he's put all things under his feet. As long as you try not to sin, you're struggling. But when you say, I am dead to sin. You see yourself messed up? You say, well, I'm messed up, but I'm still dead to it. I just have to keep saying it. So the manifest, Lord, I don't believe that was me. I'm dead to that. That's the old man trying to rise up. I'm going to let him rise up. I'm going to keep him dead. You're dead to that. I'm dead to that. You keep saying it. You keep saying it. You keep believing it. You keep believing it. You keep standing on it. You keep standing on it. And the temptation that used to grip you and hold you now releases you. And you're not even tempted by it anymore. That's freedom. Freedom is not being tempted and not sin. Freedom is being tempted and it's not even temptation anymore for you. That's freedom. That's when you're dead to it. And alive under God. Because they are people in sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I just feel like all the wisdom of somebody, they had somebody pray for somebody. Uh, if, 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 if anybody just, just wants to pray, for anything, I just want to lay hands on you. Praise God, praise God. If it's, just, if it's just so that you can, you know, get more revelation of who you 